Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday to you. We made it to the end of another week. Got another one under our belt. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Pray you guys received sweet sleep last night. Woke up with bells and whistles on and ready to take on this day and the weekend. Hey, heartbeat Rodney and Carolyn. Hey, heartbeat Puddin' Pop. Hey, heartbeat Eva. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, heartbeat Belinda to the gathering of hearts this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, AKA the heart gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is Help, I Need Forgiveness, Part 5. Hey there, Heartbeat Elaine, Heartbeat Donald, Heartbeat Yolanda, Heartbeat Linda, how are you? And I think I may have missed Heartbeat Doris. I think that's what I remember scrolling up. Hey, Heartbeat Nicole, good morning, good morning, good morning. We are going to uh, attempt to close out at least this aspect of this series for this week. Don't know what God is going to do for Monday. We may still be right here on Forgiveness because God hijacked it yesterday, right? I mean, he had a word for us, which was so good. So anyway, we want to give God a praise for he is just so good. He is the father. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the lifter of our heads. He is the one who wipes away our tears. He is the one who puts a smile on our faces. He is the one who causes us to be who we are because he has created us in his own image. Now, isn't that love that before you could do a thing, before you were in your mother's womb, he already knew that you were going to be in his image. He already knew that you were going to be a somebody. Glory to God. Give him praise for that. Well, let's jump into help. I need forgiveness part five. Um, first, we started out with um, the first thing that we wanted to do in how to ask for forgiveness is that we wanted to acknowledge what we did wrong, that we wanted to simply come clean. We wanted to simply be truthful about the thing and acknowledge that we need we had done something wrong and that we needed to, you know, go and ask someone for forgiveness. The second step in that was to actually ask for forgiveness. And that when we go and ask for forgiveness, we're not shifting blame. We're not shifting, you know, the problem that we're going and we're saying I was wrong when I did whatever it is that you did and I am asking for your forgiveness. You've got to make sure that you say that and I am asking for your forgiveness. In this stage of number, stage two of asking for forgiveness, you want to get that out. You don't be concerned about the expressions on the person's face because they may not be ready for it, but you've got to do what God has called you to do, understanding that forgiveness is not for the other person, but it is for you and understanding that when you're asking for forgiveness, it's going to work for both of you. It's going to work for you immediately. It may take time for the person that um, you're asking um, forgiveness from. And so we want to remember that. Um, step number three, Here's where we understand the individual's feelings and be respectful. Now, remember in step two, I stated, you know, we're not going to worry about their facial expressions when you're talking because you've got to get it out. But now, once you've gotten that um, asking for forgiveness, once you've gotten that out, once you've apologized to the person, now here is where they come into play. You've got to understand the individual's feelings and be respectful. You've got to understand that they, you know, may not come around right away. After you've apologized and asked for forgiveness, now it's time to put that individual's feelings first. They may need some space. They may, you know, um, and you have to give it to them. You know what I mean? You've got to pray. Pray that God will heal their heart. Pray that they will accept your um, apology. Accept this though, that the relationship may not be restored to business as usual. Accept that they may forgive you, but they may not reconcile. You know, sometimes when we do things, you know, there are still are consequences. And so you've got to know that when you go to ask for forgiveness, when you go to apologize, that it may not go back to the exact same. They may decide to forgive you, but they may decide that, hey, we're not going to rekindle this relationship back to how it was. They may forgive you, but they may not hang out as much. And so you've got to, you know, be able to handle that. Um, um, 
your name might not make the invite list as much as it used to, or it may not make the invite list at all. But however, you've still got to go and do what you need to do. You've got to apologize. You've got to um, ask them for their forgiveness. Um, understand the prodigal son. He understood his dad's feelings. Remember when he came to himself, he said this. He said, I'm going to go back to my father's house. I'm not worthy of being a son, but I'll just be a servant because he knew what he had done. Remember, he asked his father for his inheritance while his father was still living. I always say that I thought that was very disrespectful, but understand this. He understood where his dad may have been. I'm not even worthy to be your son, but I'm sorry if you just accept me just to work as a servant if you just accept me just to be on the same property that you're on so he understood the feelings of his dad he understood the um the magnitude of what he had done and sometimes when not sometimes when we are acknowledging what we've done we've got to acknowledge the whole thing we've got to acknowledge the magnitude of what took place just like when you want someone to apologize to you you know you can lay that thing out you did this you you did that and when you did this it caused this and it caused that where well, it works both ways when we are the offender we offend people and sometimes the magnitude is great and when you are acknowledging this you've got to acknowledge how deep the hurt how deep the portrayal how deep it may have been you cannot be oblivious because it's you and think that it did not cut that it did not sting and so you've got to see this thing both ways again I am so excited about what God is doing. I know this is not a popular topic that people want to deal with, but it's so um, amazing to me that God would love his people so much that he's coming for you, that he says, I'm going to massage your heart, that I'm going to get you through this, that you may receive the promise that I already prearranged and preordained for you. And so Heartbeat Nation, I cannot say it enough that I am super duper proud of you, that you are taking this thing on and that you are applying what you're learning. I'm reading your emails. I'm reading the DMs. I'm reading your comments. And if no Nobody else tells you, I'm going to tell you that I am super duper proud of you. I am your biggest cheerleader and know that you will get through this, that God is going to honor that you are aligning your life up with the word of God. It may not look like it right now. It may not even feel like it, but know that when you listen to the voice of God, when you align yourself up with the word of God and you're trying to get your life back in order, that God sees it, he hears it, he knows and he's coming for you. He's coming to take care of the situation. So again, kudos. Number four in this um, how to ask for forgiveness. The last one that I have today is take action. Take action. Commit to the person um, that it will not happen again and then make sure it doesn't. You know when someone apologizes to you, you want the apology to be sincere. You want to know that it has come from their heart. And so in the same token, you've got to be the same way. When you take action, you've got to commit to the person that it will not happen again and make it sure that it doesn't. You know, there's nothing worse than apologizing, but you continue that same behavior. I'm going to say it again. There's nothing, there's nothing worse than apologizing and then you continue that same behavior um it shows a sign when you when you do apologize and you continue in that same behavior it shows that your apology may have not been sincere sincere it shows that you really don't have love or concern for the person because when you love somebody when you are concerned about them it matters to you how they feel. And so when someone tells you that something isn't right, that you know, I like to say you mishandled me and you continue to do it, it shows a sign that you really don't care about their feelings. You really don't care about their emotions, that what the words that are coming out your mouth, your actions aren't lining up with it. Um, also, when you do that, trust is broken. Remember, you already had to go back and apologize, which means that something happened in that relationship. So when you apologize, you want to make a commitment to make it right and keep it right. Um, think about what happens when the words, I'm sorry, no longer matter. 
that's not a good place to be in when I'm sorry doesn't work anymore because the person does not trust you because you're always saying it, but your actions are not lining up with it. We've all been there. So don't be that person. So when you take action, you want to commit to whatever it is that you told that person. When you say that I'm sorry, it will never happen again. You want to do your best to make sure that it never happens again. Um, taking action causes your attitude and your words to line up and it shows your apology be your apology will be just as loud as the disrespect was i'm gonna say that again taking action causes your attitude and your words to line up together and it shows your apology will be just as loud as your disrespect was i'm always saying when you apologize to someone your apology needs to be as loud as the disrespect was if you disrespected them in front of people then you need to apologize in front of people if you disrespected them by getting on the phone gossiping about them then you need to get on the phone and call those same people back and let them know i was wrong they were right i should not have done that your apology needs to be as loud as the disrespect was um when you continue the wrongdoing after apologizing your apology no longer has substance and so it is totally up to you and on you to change to grow and to mature and to develop for your sake and for the one that you offended and so i'm just going to do this one example here in the time um, that I have left. Let's go to uh, Psalm 51 because David clearly um, took action on um, what he had to do when he had to apologize with the incident with him and Bathsheba. Let's look at Psalm 51 really quick. And I want to go, look what translation? I'm, I'm going, I think I'm going to read this in the message. And I'm going to start at. Um, see what verse here pa I think I'm reading a passion trance no new King James new King James version so when David took action after what happened with him in Bathsheba he says this I'm going to read in um verse 7 remove my sin and make me pure wash me until I am whiter than snow let me hear sounds of joy and happiness again. Let the bones you crush be happy again. Don't look at my sins. Erase them all. God, create a pure heart in me and make my spirit strong again. Don't push me away or take your Holy Spirit from me. Your help made me so happy. Give me that joy again. Make my spirit strong and ready to obey you. I will teach the guilty how you want them to live and the sinners will come back to you. And so David, literally, when he took action, he wrote Psalm 51 to pour out his heart unto God. God, help me not to be this way. God, restore unto me a new heart. God, make me clean again. God, when you do this, he said, I will teach transgressors your ways. I will let people know that this is the route to go, that this is the way to do it. And so you've got to be that same way you know you got to be like the gospel of the wine is remember they said uphold me mold me shape me uh, whatever it takes lord don't take your joy from me when god's joy is within you it's hard to offend people when god's joy is on the inside of you it's hard to walk in darkness when god's joy is with you you tend to walk in the light so you've got to be like the wine is ask god to rebuke you reprove you chastise you revive you to appoint you a anoint you but whatever he does don't take your joy away from me lord choose me and use me let me take action in this thing that you have called me to do and so heartbeat nation i'm gonna stop it right there on today that's the daily dose just help i need forgiveness if you have not subscribed to the youtube channel already please 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 do so because there you'll find all of your dosages in one place follow me on social media platforms god wants me 
whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. God wants me whole and I am. I love you guys a bunch. I will see you right back here on Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. Have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And remember, you want to take action. That shows the maturity in you. That shows that you are sincere when you go to ask for forgiveness. Know this, I'm always rooting for you and you can do it. See you on Monday.